Linux distros are always evolving and what was once a platform filled with obscure OSs strictly for enthusiasts has grown into something that anyone can jump into. Whether you're after something lightweight to load into an old PC or a comprehensive package for more intensive use, our list of the best Linux distros of 2019 should have you covered. Hi, this is Phil from Make Tech Easier and this is the best Linux distros of 2019. We've categorised our list into different specialities like privacy, old computers and experienced users, which should help direct you to the Linux distro best suited to you. Ease of use. Linux Mint. If you're fresh to this whole Linux business, then it's natural to feel a little bit overwhelmed if you're migrating over from Windows or Mac OS. For that reason, you may want to start simple and Linux Mint is just what you need. Mint comes packed with much of the software you need to get straight back into your workflow, such as LibreOffice and some decent onboard media software. You have a choice of four main desktop environments, with Cinnamon being the most Windows-like with its pseudo start menu. It's light resource-wise too, loading faster and using less memory than the ever-popular Ubuntu. Mint is always in sync with the latest Ubuntu LTS releases, meaning you don't need to worry about being left vulnerable during zero-day scares or malware outbreaks. Well... No more so than anyone else anyway. Keeping this in mind, some people might also recommend Ubuntu or Elementary OS, but we'll stick with Linux Mint. Privacy. Tails. Privacy is a strange concept, but one that is becoming more important as technology becomes inherently woven into our daily lives. It boils down to what you perceive as your threat model. If you're trying to be 100% anonymous on the internet, for example, you will have to try very hard to do this. If you want to prevent companies from building a data profile on you, then things are easier. A good way to be more anonymous online is to use Tails. Tails is a Debian-based Linux distro that comes pre-configured to use the Tor network. Tor is a public decentralized network that allows users to send and receive traffic through different relays. The concept is simple. Each relay has its own IP address, which hides the original location of the user by creating several layers. This is especially useful for privacy-conscious individuals or users within countries that have oppressive governments. Tails is designed to be run from portable storage, meaning that it only uses your RAM and leaves no permanent traces of what you've been up to on it, although you can save your data on your portable media. It comes with a bunch of privacy-based encrypted tools like an instant messenger, Keypass X, password manager and email encryption tools. Crucially, LibreOffice is there for most of your productivity needs. Forensics. Kali Linux. Linux is a strong player within the area of forensics. There are many distros to pick from this category, but I am choosing Kali Linux. Kali Linux is a Debian-derived Linux distribution designed for digital forensics and penetration testing. It is maintained and funded by Offensive Security Limited. The toolset is very comprehensive and prior knowledge would be obviously very useful. Beginners should take advantage of Offensive Security's courses to become a Kali Ninja. Runs from RAM. Puppy Linux. The obvious choice here is Puppy Linux. Puppy is a super lightweight distro that will run entirely within RAM on a given machine. This is incredibly useful if you need to perform tasks quickly. The entire system can be run from RAM with current versions currently taking up only about 210 megabytes, allowing the boot medium to be removed after the operating system has started. It has variations built on Slackware and Ubuntu, but they both have the same tools for the most part. I use it when I need to repurpose and wipe hard drives using either the DD command or HDPalm, but it is a fully stocked distro for a variety of tasks. Old computers and notebooks, Bode Linux. Despite the rise of the tablet, there are still users who have lighter portable netbooks and who make use of Linux. The same can be said for older machines that can be given a new life. A great distro for this enterprise is Bode Linux. While it's a derivative of Ubuntu, like many are, it is an elegant and lightweight distro featuring Moksha, an Enlightenment 17-based desktop environment. Along with the polished desktop, Bode offers a minimal install, which leaves the user free to customise easily. Bode offers a variety of ISO files, and in particular, it can be installed on Chromebooks and legacy devices. Rolling release, Antagos. If you're tired of having to constantly upgrade your Linux distro from version to version, Arch Linux is the one for you. 
Antagos is based on Arch Linux and comes with all the benefits of a full vanilla Arch install, but leaves that complication at the door. Antagos is Arch with no assembly required. Antagos has developed its own graphical installer, which makes the Arch Linux install process an absolute breeze for any Linux user. It allows you to set up your system exactly how you want it and boot into a perfectly configured install with no bloat. The Arch Linux wiki is unparalleled when it comes to distribution documentation. Everything in it applies to Antagos. You also have the added benefit of Arch's huge repositories that are always kept updated and the AUR Arch user repository. If you're more comfortable with Linux and looking for a new distribution packed with power and options, Antagos is definitely worth consideration. For the experienced, Gen 2. Gen 2 might seem like an odd choice if you've paid attention to all the memes and noise around it. Gen 2 is no joke though, it's easily the most flexible distribution around and you can configure it to be as stable or as bleeding edge as you need. Essentially Gen 2 is whatever you make it. Gen 2 is a source based distribution, meaning you compile every package that you install from its source code when you install it. Whilst this does take additional time, it also presents an opportunity to customise every package to meet your needs. Whether you're installing Gen2 on a desktop or server, you can tailor it precisely. For desktops, you can choose a desktop environment or window manager without any unnecessary bloat. Servers provide a similar situation, allowing for lightweight purpose-built installations. As an added bonus, Gen2 doesn't make any decisions for you, not even something like System D. If you don't want it, you don't need it. On the side of security, the Gen2 Harden project is one of the best, if not the best, projects within a Linux distribution to increase its overall security. Even without the GR security patches that were previously a large part of the project, Gen2 Hardened is an excellent option for server or desktop security. So, what are your opinions of the choices? Do you have better alternatives for the criteria selected? And if so, why? Let us know in the comments section below. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.